I'm Brian Wong with Edmunds, and I have traveled long and far all the way here to Stuttgart, Germany, the home of Porsche, to see what just might be the new most important vehicle in its entire lineup. This is the 2024 Macan EV, and this is Porsche's second EV, its follow-up to the Taycan. But while that vehicle was sort of a niche sports sedan, the Macan EV has much larger aims. The Macan EV exists as a supplement to what is already one of the two best-selling vehicles in Porsche's entire lineup, which makes it a very important vehicle for the automaker and arguably the EV that probably should have come first. Now for this video, we're going to refer to this vehicle as the Macan EV, not to get you confused, but to Porsche, this is just going to be the Macan. So actually the trim levels that are available for the Macan EV are not going to be available on the gas version. So the Macan EV is going to be available as the Macan 4 and the Macan Turbo. And Macan fans will know those are two trims that are actually missing from the gas lineup. But again, today, just to not confuse anyone, Macan EV. This actually debuts the new premium platform electric that Porsche is going to share with Audi. So it is basically a purpose-built EV platform, entirely different from what you're gonna find underneath the gas Macan, enough so that you're basically gonna to have to consider this an entirely different vehicle. It's also longer and wider than the existing Macan and comes with slightly different styling. It's got a bit more of a coupe-like profile than the Macan, but being on an electric platform also means you get some interior space benefits that we're gonna cover later. If these two don't look all that different than the regular Macan, that's on purpose. Porsche doesn't want to deviate too much from the formula that's made the entry-level SUV such a strong seller. So the styling for the electric version is going to stay in the family. Even the gas version's side blades still make an appearance here, though much other work has been done to make the Macan EV more aerodynamic. There's a fully sealed underbody, active cooling shutters up front, and a deployable rear spoiler with a few different settings. That all helps to give the Macan EV a slippery coefficient of drag of just 0.25, which beats both the Mercedes-Benz EQE SUV and the Genesis GV60. Both of these vehicles are going to come with standard all-wheel drive via dual electric motors, and of course the Macan Turbo is going to be a lot more powerful than the Macan 4. The Macan 4 is going to make 382 horsepower, while the Macan Turbo makes 577 horsepower. Now both of these vehicles are also going to come with an overboost function, so if you're using the launch control, it's going to open up the power even more. That's going to give the Macan 4 402 horsepower, but the Macan Turbo 630 horsepower. That's enough to get this vehicle from zero to 62 miles an hour in just 3.3 seconds. And the Macan 4, it's no slouch, it's gonna make that sprint in just 5.1 seconds as well. For the US, this vehicle is also going to come standard with the air suspension, so you'll have different suspension levels and Porsche active suspension management with two valve dampers like you'll find in the new Cayenne as well. Now the Macan EV is also going to have more sort of aggressive weight distribution. So instead of being front weight biased like the Macan, this is going to have a 4852 weight split and staggered larger rear tires. And Porsche says that should make this feel even more dynamic than the gas version, which was already one of the best driving SUVs out there. Now, as you know, a couple weeks ago, we actually got to drive the Macan EV, and we're not actually allowed to tell you driving impressions about the car yet, but if I was able to, I would probably say something like, and that's pretty much all I have to say about that. One other thing the Macan EV has that the Macan doesn't is this active spoiler. So the spoiler actually comes in a few different positions. This one right here is sort of the uh, very low drag position. So if you're at the highway and you're cruising speeds and things like that, it's going to kind of sit in this setting. It's gonna lower the drag of the vehicle, make it more aerodynamically efficient. But if you put the vehicle into Sport Plus, this is actually going to pop up a little bit more to give you more downforce over the rear. Just another way that Porsche really wants to emphasize performance in this EV in a market where a lot of the EVs kind of aren't that fun to drive. The Macan EV is also going to offer rear wheel steering with about five degrees of turning. And what that does is it shrinks the turning radius for the vehicle, but it also works in concert with the front wheels at highway speeds. So you can do things like change lanes even smoother than you could before. Both the Macan 4 and the Turbo are going to come with a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, and that's slightly larger than the 93 kilowatt hour battery pack you're going to get with the Taycan. 
Now for range, we have the European figures for these vehicles, but they're not really applicable to the US market. And if you will remember, a couple weeks ago, we got to drive the Macan EV actually on a range test along with Porsche's engineers. And in the turbo, I got 305 miles of range on mostly highway driving. Again, these are figures that we're going to have to test on our own when we finally get the Macan EV in later, but we're generally pretty positive about how these vehicles will do on our test. Both of these vehicles will be able to fast charge at speeds of up to 270 kilowatts, which means that they should be able to go from 10% to 80% battery in about 21 minutes. That's a figure that we're eager to test and see where this vehicle lands on our new Edmunds Charging Leaderboard, which you can check out via the link in the description. Inside, you're going to get a lot of learnings from the Taycan sort of in the dashboard, but from a space perspective, the Macan EV feels a lot roomier. That starts with where you actually sit. So the hit point in this vehicle has dropped down quite a bit, and that means you feel like you have a lot more air room, but then also the center console here is slimmer as well. They sort of changed the orientation of the cup holders from the regular Macan, and the control scheme is much simpler, which we do like, and you have these physical controls as well for the climate. But the big change is as this has slimmed down, you just feel like you have a lot more space for your legs. Although the Macan's roominess issues are usually more found in the second row. The biggest issue that I've had with the gas-powered versions of the Macan has always been the back seat. It's always just been really too small. You couldn't fit adult passengers comfortably back there, and if you needed to install something like a car seat, good luck. Here in the Macan EV, though, things have really improved, thanks in part to that longer wheelbase. Uh, the Porsche tells us that the legroom has increased by about two inches, and the headroom has gone up by about an inch as well. So I set this seat up where I like to drive, and despite what some of you in the comments have said, I am just under six feet tall, and as you can see, a lot of legroom. Before, I would hate to be in the backseat of a Macan. It was really not that comfortable with this one. Very comfortable. The seat actually sits at a pretty comfortable angle as well, and lots of headroom as well. Now, this is a German spec vehicle, so it doesn't have the glass glass panoramic roof that's going to be standard on the American version, but Porsche tells us that even with that glass roof installed, you'll still have about an extra inch of headroom, so if you're under, I don't know, 6566, you should be pretty good back here from now on. Another new feature on the Macan EV will be the HUD. So Porsche tells us that this HUD is actually designed to appear as an 87 inch television about 30 feet away. And what's cool about that is that if you're going to then read it while you're driving, your eyes don't actually need to refocus. You can stay in that sort of long focus with your eyes, read the information, and it doesn't feel like you're having to like look down to sort of look at a book or anything like that. A very cool feature and on the road, it works very, very well. You also get a new augmented reality feature. So if you have a destination entered into the native navigation, and little arrows will sort of appear out in the distance and they'll guide you. In other vehicles, I haven't really liked this integration. It's felt a bit laggy and clunky, but in this vehicle, it should be more seamless because you don't really have to take your eyes off the road at all to see those arrows. Cargo volume behind the second row hasn't really grown that much. It's about 17 cubic feet of space back there. But since this is an EV and we don't have to put an engine up front, what you do get is a nice cargo space. So this front has about three cubic feet of cargo space. You can open it by the key fob, which is pretty cool. And that's large enough to fit my overstuffed backpack or things like the charging cables for the vehicle. And then you just close it up. After getting to test out the Macan EV's range in Southern California and getting to see these more production ready examples here in Germany, I find myself more excited for this vehicle than ever before. And that's in part because Porsche is one of the few companies that makes an EV that actually feels like it's pretty fun to drive. The Taycan drives like a Porsche, just electrified. And if they can do the same thing with this Macan EV, which again, I can neither confirm or deny, then this might end up being a very successful vehicle. Another important factor in the Macan EV's success will be its price tag, which we didn't find out officially until I got back to the States. Over there, I only got a glimpse at the European pricing and that was a rather large figure that gave me pause. But it turns out that in these United States, it's going to be a lot more affordable, with the Macan 4 starting at just a little more than the S trim level of the gas version. And as a cherry on top, we get even more standard equipment than the Europeans, including a panoramic glass roof and air suspension. 
Turbo models will obviously cost a lot more, but still, that's way, way less than you'd pay for a Tycon Turbo, which starts at over $160,000. By the time you're watching this video, ordering for the Macan EV should be open, though Porsche tells us that deliveries for this vehicle in the US won't start until summer of 2024. Closer to then, we'll actually get to get behind the wheel and finally share those impressions with you, and hopefully, not long after that, we'll get to put the vehicle on the Edmunds EV range test to find out what its real world range actually is. Two tasks that I hope I get to sign up for.